Does God make Christians perfect in this life? That's the question that we're going to look at in today's daily devotion. I'm Pastor John Blevins. I'm thankful you're with us, for it is the Lord's Day, Sunday, May 17th, 2020. It was a great blessing to be together for our devotion, which is posted as we normally do on a Saturday evening, so that you might be able to, to watch it prior to the Lord's Day or during the Lord's Day, whichever it is of your preference. But regardless, again, I ask you this week, as I do each week, please pray, not only for yourself, but for all of God's people, that they might delight in the Lord tomorrow and delight in the day that He's given to us, uh, that we might rest in His goodness and His grace, that we can set aside the concerns and the distractions, some of them important distractions, some of them not so much, of the world and of our regular routines, and we might be able to gather together to worship. I understand some are still in a situation where you're not able to gather together physically. I do pray you have a, a live streaming option from your church. If not, I'll remember try to remember to post a, a link to the church I serve, and you can watch our live streams at 11 a.m. and at 6 p.m., but it's a day to gather together with God's people to worship the Lord. It's a day to do acts of mercy uh, and also uh, to look after uh, others in those acts uh, of mercy and, of course, acts of, of necessity. But I pray that you would delight in God on His day that He's given. All right, well, again, best day of the week. First day of the week, Lord's Day, can't be beat. It is the way to start. So let's go to God's Word and hear from Him as we pursue a little bit more of our devotion as we get after it now. Galatians chapter 5, reading verses 16 and 17. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. If you've been with us uh, for more than one or two devotions, you know that uh, that passage is one of several of our study passages that are down in the description. So I pray that on the Lord's Day you'll take some time uh, to read through those and, and hear from God and enjoy that and then talk to Him, pray. And uh, I, my prayer is that the Lord would bless you in that time of fellowship and communion uh, with Him as you hear from Him and He hears from you. Well, those passages that we have down in the description, they also are the passages that come together and summarize and give us our theology portion that we are going to look at now. Starting in Westminster, Confession of Faith, turning to chapter 13 of Sanctification, reading the second section. This sanctification is throughout in the whole man, yet imperfect in this life. There abiding still some remnants of corruption in every part, whence arises a continual and irreconcilable war, the flesh lusting against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. Turn to Westminster Larger Catechism, question 78. Whence ariseth the imperfection of sanctification in believers? The imperfection of sanctification in believers ariseth from the remnants of sin abiding in every part of them and the perpetual lustings of the flesh against the spirit, whereby they are often foiled with temptations and fall into many sins, are hindered in all their spiritual services, and their best works are imperfect and defiled in the sight of God. So our question, does God make Christians perfect in this life? Well, have you ever met a Christian? Let's, let's just be even a little more personal. Uh, have you taken any notice of yourself, Christian? No. No, no, no. God does not make Christians perfect in this life. That is clear. I mean, we could answer that just from our own experience, but even more important, the authority of Scripture. Uh, the Bible does not teach that. There are a few um, spread apart, 
false teachers, systems of belief, groups, cults that do believe in some sort of perfectionism, but that is not what the Bible teaches. I mean, just from the what we read in Galatians, that's clear. Uh, you can't be perfect if your flesh is warring against the Spirit. Uh, that pretty much right there uh, null and voids any uh, honest pursuit of uh, I, the uh, claim that, yeah, I'm perfect. That's not, <laughs> that is not what the Bible teaches. So, you should not expect to be perfect in this life. You should not expect others to be perfect. So as you look at your fellow brethren, brothers and sisters in Christ, you shouldn't look at their life and go, oh, oh they're not perfect. And then be judgmental or have an arrogant, haughty uh, spirit about you. Uh, because no one's perfect except for the Lord Jesus Christ. You're not perfect. Period. Now, as we look at that reality, what we don't want to do, though, is turn around and say, well, nobody's perfect, so it's fine that there's this going on, and you've got Christians who are claiming these different sins as identities, and, and we're going to hyphenate Christianity, and we're going to be this Christian and that Christian. And, and I know that if you, if you look at a particular person's life and, and you were to know nothing about them and not have a conversation, you just look at it and you go, well, there's zero evidence or fruit that they're a Christian there, but, but you know, hey, nobody's perfect. That's not what we're saying. We're not saying that someone can live a continual lifestyle of sin and claim the name of Christ. The scriptures are clearly against that. That, that is not something that's true. You cannot have a lifestyle of sin and have an overarching uh, bondage to that sin, pursuing it. It's the number one thing in your life. It's what you identify yourself as. It's what, it's what everything's wrapped around about accomplishing this and being about that. If that's you, you need to take a long, hard look at yourself and your heart. There's a good chance that there is a lot of repentance that needs to come and a falling before the Lord Jesus Christ and begging for forgiveness. Because that's not what we're talking about here. Yes, no one is perfect. But no, no one lives a, a lifestyle of sin and yet claims the name of Christ at the same time. So as we think about this and we meditate upon on the Lord's Day, the two big things that I hope that you, you'll... Uh, take some time to consider. One, others aren't perfect. Period. So, we're kind of wasting our time if we're going to be judgmental. Now, some of you watching this may be an elder. Perhaps God has raised you up and He's called you to that position. So, you, it's a little different. You have a responsibility to, to speak truth into people's lives and to lovingly uh, shepherd them under Christ. Uh, doing that in all uh, gentleness and, and love, and yes, sometimes there is a little bit more forceful rebuking. So that is one thing. Uh, perhaps you're a parent and you have this opportunity uh, to speak that into your children. I uh, would caution you to be loving in this as well. And then, of course, as Christians, we also have this ability uh, to challenge one another, iron sharpening iron, and, and to bring that to bear. But we need to be very careful that we have no arrogance in our heart. We need to be very humble when we pursue these things. And then the other thing is to remember you're not perfect. So that when you sin, which you will, repent and flee to Christ. Don't let it bog you down like an anchor dragging you to the bottom of the sea where you wallow in the depths and the mire of the ocean. Don't do that. Flee to Christ. Flee to Christ. Oh Lord, we ask that you would do that. Give us hearts that are thankful for your salvation, that we or we understand that we're not perfect, but we're humble, and that when we do sin, that we, we flee to you and to your grace. In Christ's name, amen. Well, it's good to be together with you on this Lord's Day, or right before it. Go ahead.